Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about function notation. So function notation is really just a different way um, to write a function and it's really at the end of the day just a different way to express our y variable or what would be our output or our dependent variable. So non-function notation simply looks like this, y equals mx plus b, and function notation just looks like this, f of x equals mx plus b. So if you compare these two things, you'll notice the only thing that's different is this one says y, and this one has this symbol, which as you see right here, we read of as f of x. Now, I do want to point out that this is just a symbol uh, a way to name a function. This does not mean you're multiplying f and x, okay? It's a way to name a function. But really, it means the same exact thing as y. So just like you can write a coordinate as x, y, you could write the coordinate as x, f of x. So what we can conclude is that y and f of x are interchangeable, meaning they really mean the same thing. Now, I do also want to point out um, that uh, you can name functions differently. It's not always f of x. You'll also commonly see functions called g of x or h of x. Now, the reason why we like to name it like this is because using function notation, you can see what your input and output are. Here, if you just have y in isolation, you only know what y is. But here, if you name it in this way, you'll know what the x originally was and what your output is. So it's a way to see input and output in the same math sentence. So I'll show you what I mean by that in this example. Here we have the function f of x equals negative 4x plus 7. I do want to point out that since it's in the form of y equals mx plus b, it is a linear function. So they want us to evaluate when x equals 2. We know that we've done this in the past. Usually we would just substitute and then say, okay, y equals that value. The only thing that's different here is just the notation. So the way we substitute with function notation is we say f of 2. And now we are going to substitute in the same way. We write negative 4 times 2 plus 7. And then we're just going to simplify. So f of 2 equals negative 8 plus 7. So f of 2 equals negative 1. And this is our answer. And this is how we're going to say our answer. Now, once again, this is nice because think if we just said y equals negative 1. That's really great. We know what y is equal to, but we can't tell by this answer what our input was. When we write it like this, it's a nice way to show, hey, our input was 2, and the output we get is negative 1. Or another way of looking at it is I take my f function, I substituted 2, and here's my um, output. So it just tells us a little bit more information than simply writing y equals negative 1. However, it really means the same exact thing. Okay, why don't you pause the video and see if you can evaluate these two functions, f of x and g of x, and I want you to evaluate them for when x equals negative 4, 0, and 3. So you're going to evaluate three times for each function. Okay, let's check our answers. So here um, you can see that I showed all of my substitution. So I showed f of negative 4. So I substituted x with negative 4, and then x with 0, and then x with 3. And here negative 8 minus 5 is 13, negative 13. So f of negative 4 is negative 13. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So f of 0 is negative 5. And 6 minus 5 is 1, so f of 3 is 1. So remember, this is telling us, I used the function f, I plugged in 3, and what I got out was 1. I used the function f, I plugged in 0, what I got out was negative 5. So it's a way to show input and output in the same um, math sentence. So over here, this one is trickier because it's a negative x. So remember, the negative is part of the function. If your x value or your input is also negative, you do have this situation. But just remember, negative negative 4 is just positive 4. So that's how we got positive 3. 
So g of negative 4 is 3, g of 0 is negative 1, and g of 3 is negative 4. Okay, um, so let's try some different types of problems. So here we're given a function h of x, and the function is 2 over 3x minus 5. So they would like us now to find x for, um, for which h of x is equal to negative 7. So notice this time they're not saying x is negative 7, they're saying h of x is negative 7. So that means I'm going to replace this with negative 7. Another way of putting this is they would tell us that y is negative 7. So here we're substituting for our output instead of our input. So I'm going to replace h of x with negative 7 and then solve for x. So here I'm going to start by adding 5 to both sides. So we got negative 2 equals 2 times x divided by 3. Remember, I can always put the x straight up into the um, numerator. 2 thirds x is the same as 2x over 3. And then I see division, so I'm going to do the inverse op um, operation and multiply both sides by 3. Negative 6 equals 2 times x. Inverse operation and divide. Negative 3 equals 1x. So there you go. We found the input that gives us an output of negative 7. So once again, they didn't tell us to substitute x with negative 7. They asked us to substitute h of x with negative 7. So I replaced this entire symbol with negative 7. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and give these two problems a try. Okay, uh, go ahead and check your work here. So you can see I substituted f of x with 21. So once again, they're telling us the output rather than the input. And then I'm just solving using my inverse operation. Subtract 9 and divide by 6, so you get x equals 2. Um, same idea, I'm substituting my output g of x with negative 1. And then inverse operation, subtract by 3. Notice I wrote negative 1 half x as negative x divided by 2. So I multiply both sides by 2 and then divide both sides by negative 1. So we get x equals positive 8. Okay, the last thing that you will be asked to do is to graph a linear function from function notation. I really just want to remind you that f of x and y are interchangeable. So f of x equals 2x plus 5 is the same as y equals 2x plus 5, which we can all graph um, pretty easily by now. We know that the y-intercept is at 0, 5, it's our b value, and we know that the slope is 2 over 1. So we're just going to graph it just like any other linear equation that we've graphed in the past. So we start with our y-intercept and we do rise over run. So up to right 1 or down to left 1. And then connect your dots and you're done. So really don't be intimidated when you see this. Just remember f of x is just a different way to write y. It's just a different way to represent our output. Okay, uh, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can quickly graph these three linear functions. You can graph them all on the same x, y axis, just make sure you label them. Okay, go ahead and check your answers so you can see that the graph for number 5 is right here. Uh, y-intercept of negative 2, slope of 3 over 1. For number 6, it's this blue graph. Y-intercept of 0, 4, slope of negative 1 over 1. And for number 7, it's the green graph, y-intercept of 0, negative 1, and the slope is negative 3 over 4, negative 3 over 4. All right, that's all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.